Hey, what's up everyone? Uh, Benjamin back for another IoT video. Today we're gonna uh, use our good old friend, the MX chip IoT developer kit, and we're gonna look at what it takes and if we can run the TensorFlow Lite Hello World on it. And in the process, hopefully, um, I'm gonna teach you a few cool tricks uh, with VS Code, Visual Studio Code. Uh, so yeah, let's just dive right into it. So let's start with the um, TensorFlow website. Um, this is where essentially you can learn about all things TensorFlow. And if you've been following what's been happening in the TensorFlow world, uh, well, of course, there is a, the good old um, uh, vanilla TensorFlow framework for doing all things, um, building and training your models as well as um, doing inference on them. There's also um, a fairly recent, uh, a more uh, recent JavaScript version. But the one that we're going to be interested in for today is what's called TensorFlow Lite, which is, as the name seems to indicate, um, a way uh, to have TensorFlow um, able to run on smaller devices than your typical uh, PC or, um, or Edge server with maybe a big GPU on it, but rather uh, mobile and embedded devices, right? And so if we look at the documentation, there is lots of really cool um, uh, examples and uh, of course the, the API docs, etc. But what's particularly interesting is that there is um, a flavor of TensorFlow Lite that's actually aimed at even smaller devices like microcontrollers um, and essentially um, provides you with the ability to run TensorFlow in um, yeah as small as a couple dozens of kilobytes of uh, of flash and, and RAM, essentially. And what I uh, found funny the first time I stumbled upon this web page is that, I don't know about you, but uh, every time I see this kind of list, right, I'm like, hmm, there's a few devices supported. Um, there's no reason why my device X, Y, Z uh, couldn't work uh, as well, right? Um, um, it might not be an Arduino Nano, it might not be an STM32 dev kit, it's just my good old friend, the MX chip. Uh, but yeah, what does it take to, to run an, an example uh, and, and, um, uh, and to run TensorFlow Lite on it? And so as, uh, like I said, there is um, some like great documentation and great examples as part of TensorFlow Lite. Um, and let's start with the Hello World. What is the Hello World for TensorFlow Lite and for machine learning on microcontrollers? Uh, is this blinking an LED uh, like the um, Arduino Hello World? Well, kind of. The uh, idea is that this will work, uh, this will show you how you can take a model that's been trained uh, beforehand, a model that takes as an input a number and um, does its best to provide you as an output um, a guesstimate or um, a, the, the result of applying the sign function on it, except that it's not the actual math function. It's uh, it's based on a neural network that's that's been trained, right? And that's what we're gonna uh, we want to we want to see. Uh, we won't be using the display of the MX chip. We just want to use um, one of the built-in LEDs and um, essentially show and see whether we can find a way to have this LED sort of a pulsate, right, with a, a sign a pattern. And so let's see, like, what, what, what does it take? What would it take to actually run uh, the, the code on, uh, on, the, um, on the MX chip? All right, so we're going to launch VS Code. And um, one thing that I did already is that um, I've already installed the uh, Arduino extension. So that's uh, sort of a companion to the uh, the, the regular Ar Arduino IDE that allows you to do Arduino uh, development and uh, essentially embedded development on uh, in, in VS Code, right? And so next step for me is to um, to plug in my, uh, my AMX chip to my USB port and automatically the, um, the dev kit is actually um, detected and there is a bunch of samples that I could already be uh, playing with either um, built-in samples like the actual Hello World uh, for uh, most boards which is blinking an LED etc etc but I want to do TensorFlow Lite right and TensorFlow Lite happens to be 
uh, available as an Arduino um, library. And Arduino libraries can be installed with um, uh, the Arduino library manager. So if I um, open up my um, my uh, fancy and magic assistant in uh, VS Code, I can open up the Arduino library manager and see if by any chance I could install TensorFlow Lite. Actually, I can. So I'm going to install this version, which is the uh, the source version. I don't want to use the pre-compiled version. I'm going to use the source version. Uh, let's install this. It's going to be uh, downloaded, installed. It's going to take um, yeah a couple more seconds. There we go. And now let's see. Uh, the examples, if we refresh them, reopen uh, the, um, the the examples, we should now have a new example for our new uh, TensorFlow Lite library. And uh, I'm gonna open up the Hello World one. That sounds about right. So it opens up automatically a new um, a new project, which uh, with a with code that's pretty similar to what we've seen in the GitHub repo just before. And uh, this is the main entry point of our um, um, uh, code, our uh, sketch, you, you would call in the Arduino world. And so uh, in a nutshell, what this guy does is actually um, uh, use the TensorFlow Lite APIs to load a model. So the model has been trained beforehand, is available uh, in um, this um, binary blob, essentially, right? I, I believe uh, it's right here. Yep, that's the, the, the binary model. How do we get this model? Uh, this is uh, something that we will uh, see in just um, a few minutes. But we have the model, we load the model, we build an interpreter around it, that's going to be um, what evaluates the uh, the model when we want and need to? Uh, we allocate the memory that's needed for uh, for running the model, and that's essentially it. Uh, that's that's for the setup part. And what is the loop doing? Taking um, a number, uh, like I um, like I said before, like we want to sort of uh, simulate or uh, figure out how to best approximate uh, a sign function. So we uh, we take a number um, between zero and uh, uh, two times pi, uh, basically. And uh, for this particular number, which is going to be our input, we uh, we want to like invoke our uh, TF light model, we get an output. And uh, what is, how do we want to visualize this particular output, we could be um, displaying this on the serial line, we could be um, making some sounds, we're going to actually use um, the built in LED for that. So the only thing we need to change to the uh, vanilla uh, sample is uh, to um, control click here on handle output. Well, this actually takes me to the uh, to the include file. Um, so I want to actually uh, go there on um, this particular file. And the only thing I want to change is rather than do, uh, using uh, this particular um, LED, I want to switch to um, the red LED on, on the board, because uh, it's going to work slightly better. Uh, another, th yeah, and that, that's essentially it. Another change that I need to make is by default, uh, the MX chip uh, goes uh, pretty quick and the, the, uh, the, the blinking or the, the, the pulsation of the LED is going to be way too, way too fast. So we're going to add just a tiny bit of delay here. Um, yeah, um, two or three milliseconds should be fine. And uh, what else? And there is uh, one one last magic trick, which is um, to uh, just to make sure that uh, things compile, we need to um, to uh, to disable some built in macros that are part of the um, MX chip. Uh, um, uh, SDK, uh, and which uh, cause issue out of the box with TF Lite. It's, uh, well, yeah, it, it's no big deal. But that, that's it. Um, we're going to save um, all our um, change files. And now I use the upload command, which um, 
actually one, one last thing I, I mentioned tips and tricks if you use Arduino and uh, sometimes uh, the Arduino extension for VS Code and sometimes it takes too much time to rebuild uh, the code every time you make a change just make sure that here in the Arduino.json uh, settings file um, you add this entry with whatever folder um, floats your boat so that uh, from one build to the other uh, the results are uh, being cached right and so um, that's one neat trick and now we're going to hit upload so that the code gets built we should actually see in a short moment uh, a new folder appear uh, the, the one i um uh, i did uh, create uh, or i did configure here uh, let's wait for a couple seconds for the build to finish. We're going to probably fa fast forward just a bit. All right, so the build uh, is almost finished now. And um, remember that I actually um, uh, executed the command uh, Arduino upload. So at the end of the build, it's actually going to uh, upload the code to the, uh, to the board. And so if we look at what we uh, are running right now on uh, the dev kit, this is, um, I just plugged it in, it's uh, fresh of the box. Uh, so it's running the default um, uh, sample from um, um, like the Azure IoT default sample. But now that compilation is almost finished. Uh, the upload uh, should take place any minute now. It is taking place, right? and code is being flashed and once that's done look at the red led and tell me what's happening it's actually pulsating that's the model that is taking a number between 0 and 6.2 28 something uh, and for that particular number generates the, the corresponding um, uh, sign uh, so basically gives us a number between minus one and one and that number we sort of like um, uh, correlated to um, a brightness level for the um, LED and that's it so we are running the model that is uh, pretty cool uh, one last thing that I want to show is if what, what is the model anyways, right? What is this um, this model that we saw here? I, how do we get that model? It turns out that if you look at, uh, switch back to our um, repo here, uh, it actually tells us how we built the model in the first place. And the model is available in the form of a Jupyter notebook, uh, which is right here. And how about we open this guy in VS Code and see, how things goes. I actually opened it, I believe, um, a few moments ago. Yeah, here it is. And automatically, granted that you have the Python um, extension installed in VS Code, um, which the first time you open a Jupyter Notebook will ask you uh, whether you want to also install Jupyter you'll be able to actually uh, run notebooks. And so if you're not familiar with what uh, Jupyter notebooks are, uh, they're um, um, essentially um, like a way to, uh, to easily um, test uh, a bunch of um, some code that other folks might have written. Uh, and the code might come uh, with nice documentation and nice explanation, which makes for really good tutorials, for example, right? And so um, this particular notebook uh, automatically started a Python um, a runtime in, in the back end. And I can actually, um, so yeah, let's make sure that we don't have any um, uh, any results for all those uh, cells um, are already uh, computed so that when I um, run the cells, it does stuff. This one is only comments, so it doesn't make a lot. This one is importing all the libraries that we're going to need to train the model. Uh, TensorFlow, NumPy, um, uh, PyPlot, etc. Uh, done, uh, I think. No, it's, it's, still, um, it's still ongoing. Uh, there we go. Next, we generate some uh, random data that we're going to use to train the model. Um, not so random, so it's gonna we're going to add some noise. 
etc etc that's essentially uh, like if if you're curious how um as to how you could actually get the model go through the Jupyter notebook and do it right from VS Code, right from the very same um, uh, environment where you, um, you're you going to also develop for your MX chip, where you might also, um, maybe in the next video, uh, where you might also develop code against the Azure IoT extensions, against uh, Kubernetes, your Kubernetes cluster. Um, that's I think that's a pretty cool trick, um, pretty cool uh, tip uh, to use not only um, the Arduino extension for Arduino, but also the Python extension for all your Python stuff. Um, and yeah, have fun. If you have any questions, comments, um, just comment right below um, in in the in the comment section of the video. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to tell me what you would like to see next. And we will be back soon for another video. Cheers.